Today we will be learning about LangChain. LangChain brings some incredible modularity and some very useful tools to be used with large language models, such as OpenAI's GPT-3 or Cohere. It also works with Hugging Face. With LangChain, you can build some very complex applications, whatever you can dream of, really. And it also comes with some agents which you can use that is external to the models themselves. It is a thought process which directs it to get answers, for example, from Google search or to be able to use Wolfram Alpha or mathematical models which will answer the questions. I'll be putting all the links in the description. This is the official repository. We're also going to be looking at the LangChain Hub. Just be mindful of this original sentence that everything is very beta. This is all very new. We will begin with a really cool demo application at Hugging Face. With this demo application, you can have this talking head and you can enable speech so that it'll actually read the answers to you. We're just going to turn it off so because I think it can get a little annoying. To start with, you'll have to get your OpenAI API key and paste it right up here. You don't have to do anything else, and then you can just start playing. There are some example questions at the bottom. I'm just going to click on one and click send. It says, according to the latest census, there are approximately 37 million people living in Canada. But the cool thing is, we can actually enable its reasoning to be displayed on the chat box. Let's see what happens. Now if we ask the same question, it asks itself a question. It says, do I need to use a tool? No. And then it just answers. And then it actually prints out the answer. But if you were to ask it a more complicated question, such as what is 2 to the power of 30th power, then, then its thought process changes. It asks itself if it needs to use a tool. Then it says yes. Then picks the tool that it needs to send the input to then asks that tool and gets the result, and then asks again, does it need to use another tool, says no, and then gives you the answer. If you go to settings, you can actually enable and disable the tools it, can, it is able to use. You can also turn on OpenAI's Whisper so you can actually talk to it. You can translate it to a language level, for example. Let's just turn it into second grade. You can set the formality of it. Let's just pick honorific. You can actually select the style, emotions, and you can def define max words. So if you were to ask the same question, I'm curious at how it will answer, explain it at the second grade level, and also with the honor fixed style. As you can see, this time it picked the tool Wolfram Alpha, and then actually the answer is honor fixed and actually spelled out for a second grader. The answer to two to the 30th power is an impressive 107 billion three hundred. Yeah, this is pretty cool. For those of you who don't know, Wolfram Alpha is a computational knowledge engine. Much like GPT-3, you can ask in regular English, it's math and physics science related questions and many more. And it will try to give you answers. Check it out. It's really cool. I'll put it in the description. There is also a Google Call app that you can run. We're not going to be using this. I'll put the link in the description. There are also other ones as well to be able to use LangChain. What we're going to be doing is actually go to the LangChain documentation and I'll be going over it and actually simplifying it for you and we'll be running some code examples with VS Code. There is also the LangChain Hub UI which you can actually visit and it gives you some of its capabilities in much simpler format with code examples. You can take a look at that as well. This will be in the description. To be able to use LangChain you have to pip install LangChain and then you have to install pip in, uh, OpenAI. If you want to use GPT-3 and then you have to set your key to to be able to use GPT-3 API. Now I've set up a environment for this and I have already pip installed everything. I do recommend you use an environment as well but it's not necessary. LangChain's documentation is very cool. I recommend you to read through it. This will be in the link as well. So I have just copied a simple example from its documentation into Visual Studio Code. You have to import OS because I'm defining my API key through my environment variables. And then we are importing OpenAI. And then we are defining a language model. Here we are only specifying the temperature at 0 0.9. And by text, we are defining our prompt. What would be a good company name for a company that makes colorful socks? And when we run this, we get a GPT-3 API response. Here in this case, it says Rainbow Socks Go. This is very cool. It simplifies the interaction with GPT-3 API. And next, we're going to be talking about its powerful prompt. Here, the authors explain that 
to be able to build really useful apps, the prompting has to be made easier for the user. So you don't want the user to be inputting the entire sentence. What is a good name for a company that makes? You just want your user to enter the product. And then that needs to be combined with the prompt, which is going to be going to GPT-3. Now, this is a really useful use case. We're going to be taking a look at it. Here we are importing a prompt templating tool. By using that, we are actually modifying the, what is a good name for a company that makes product into a if string. And then if you were to print this now, the colorful sex is combined with our original prompt. Now that we can assign this to a text variable or a prompt variable and then get a response from the large language model, in this case, GPT-3. And the response we get is suck splashes. Pretty cool. Next, we'll talk about chains and multi-step workflows. A chain in LangChain is made up of links, which can either be primitives like large language models or other chains. This gives you a great modularity and flexibility when you're building your app or bringing your ideas to life. In this next example, we are importing the LLM chain. The rest of the code is same, except we are defining a chain right here, and then we are receiving a user input asking them what is your product idea, and then this chain.run user input is going to combine the original prompt with the input that the user has put in, and then is going to print out a response. So we are being asked, what is your product idea? In this case, I'm going to say R. Now the template is combined with the product, and then the name of the tech company is Automotive Technologies. Now let's talk about prompt templates. Here it says prompt template refers to a reproducible way to generate a prompt. Here, in this case, we're taking a simple example of just asking for what's a good name for a company that makes products. We're actually giving it some examples, few shotting it, and then actually sending it as a prompt to the GPT-3. So I have copied it in VS Code. This is our template. So the prompt is now using the prompt template and replacing the product with whatever the user has inputted. We are still using the chain. If we were to run this, we again are prompted to input a product idea, and this time when we say car, it says auto expert. I believe its quality has improved, right? Because it has already received some examples for company names. When creating a prompt template, you can have as many input variables as you like. Here's an example of a prompt template, which gets no input variables. As you can see, the input variables list is empty, and the template is just a tell me a joke. And when you run this, you just get tell me a joke. Here's an example to a single input prompt. Here the prompt template is receiving an adjective and then modifies the template prompt with that adjective. Here when we actually format it with the adjective being funny and when we print it, the prompt changes to tell me a funny joke. So we're looking at a multiple input prompt. In this case, the prompt template not only receives the adjective, but also the content of the joke. And the template is modified both with the adjective and the content. Here, in this case, we want a funny joke about chickens. When we print this, the prompt have changed to tell me a funny joke about chickens. You can also download some useful prompt templates directly from the LangChain Hub. You go to the repository which has the LangChain Hub, you can go to prompts. And for example, it has a examples here and you can go to conversation as an example and there's this prompt.json file to be able to do this you first import load prompt and then you run it however i ran into some issues earlier as you can see i wasn't able to find the file at that exact location now this might be due to it's being better or i'm probably doing something wrong if anybody knows what, what, what i'm doing wrong please let me know in the comments i actually overcame this by downloading the file as a local file as you can see, this is the prompt template for the conversation prompt.json. I have just simply copied it into a prompt.json file. And when I just load the prompt.json from our local working directory, then this works. We just need to print it. And when we do it here, we get a conversational style. And if you pay attention in the prompt.json, it also has history and input. So this prompting style or template can be modified with user inputs and also with an overarching history. Next, we'll look at how we can create a prompt template, which will use a few shot examples in it as well. First, we define some examples. Here, in this case, we're going to be given a word and then an antonym of it. Next, we specify the template to format the examples we have provided. Our example template is going to be consisting of words and antonyms. These are just the examples we will be giving 
which will be formatted in this example. And then the example prompt will be, with the prompt template, we'll take the input variables and then we'll format it accordingly. Then we create a few shot prompt template, which uses the few shot prompt template, which we have imported right here. We assign examples to be the examples and example prompt to be the example prompt we have already given. Prefix is usually the instruction that you write in ahead of the examples. Here in this case, it is to give the antonym of every input. An antonym is the complete opposite of what the word specifies. And the suffix is what comes after the examples. In this case, the word. Usually, this is where the user input goes in because the user will want to give a word in whatever word they choose. And then the language model will return the antonym, the opposite of that word. Here we can specify the user input variables, and we can actually receive that input from the user. Okay. And the example separator is the string we will use to join the prefix examples and the suffix together with for line breaks. And then we can prompt, we can format our few shot prompt and actually print it, and it will print exactly as what we specified. First, the prefix, the instruction, give the antonym of every input, and then example separators, which is two line breaks, and then the two examples with the word and the antonym of the word. Here we can see. And then the user input here specified is big, and then the antonym is going to be requested from the language model. There is also an example selector. If you have a large number of examples, you can use the example selector to select the subset of examples that would be most informative for the language model. This will help you generate a prompt that is more likely to generate a good response. For example, you can use the length-based example selector, which selects the examples according to the length. This is useful because you won't know maybe sometimes that you might be going over the token limit. What the length-based example selector does is it looks at your examples and then if they're short, it includes many of the examples. If your examples include long examples, then it includes actually lesser amount of the examples for the few shot prompting. We won't be doing this on the Visual Studio Code, but you can read about this. It's right there in the documentation. So the key concepts are that we have prompts. Prompts is the input to the language model. And then the chain lang helps lang chain helps with prompt templates prompt templates are a way to create prompts in a reproducible way and prompt templates generically have a uh, format method that takes in variables and inputs and returns a formatted string input variables are if you need to have user input included in the prompt you can also do few shot examples as we have spoken about and you also have the example selection for prompt engineering there's also serialization to make it easy to share prompt templates as well there are also examples on how you can actually create a custom prompt template. All the code necessary is right here. You can review it. And then you can use that custom prompt template. There is also, you can also create a custom example selector and a few shot examples to prompt. Also prompt serialization and example selectors are all available.